I'm seeing that my fan that dries out our rabbit treats is actually going to be too harsh on these plants, so I need to find a way to cover them and also to reflect light back at them from this side. So I probably need to go up and get my next tray, my next shelf out, put it on, and then allow something to drape over it and on the back to protect these. And it has all these little bits of goodness mixed with the feed. And this is what we make ourselves for our bunnies. This tray came from Fit Farmer. Catherine and I met him at Baker's Creek in California. And these are his microgreen trays. They're very sturdy. And we just set them up in a place in our kitchen where the air from the fan, just the ceiling fan, has uh, access to them. And we put apple peelings and apple cores we put turnip peelings and carrot peelings. We, we eat a lot of really fresh food. We make a lot of stews and that kind of thing. So th all those peelings can go in here. I do not keep the greens from anything that is a nightshade. That would be potatoes or um, peppers or tomatoes or eggplant, those kind of things. I don't put those in. The carrots and apples, and then we have pumpkin seeds. Let's see if it'll focus in on it. Pumpkin seeds, or squash seeds, or squash rinds. They'll eat those, they're, they're just roughage, and give them some variety. We've never had a problem with our animals getting any kind of stomach upset from that. But if you're not into that kind of thing, we did find this over at Ace Hardware slash True Value. So that's what we're doing. The rabbits have been moved out to the ponies. They're in cages that are really nice, big and roomy. They have lots of sunlight and um, they have the, the shed, the, the horse stall over the top of them so they're not getting rained on and we're really happy with the situation. I feel like anything you can do to, to save things that come into your home and use them for something else, the better you're gonna feel about your own waste stream. We save all of our carbon, all of our non-shiny paper, and we use it for bedding. So we go through quite a bit of bedding out there. And what we're doing is since we don't have our own chickens, we go through a lot of eggs that are store-bought. So we always get the cardboard ones and any school papers that are not shiny, we tear those up. But this is the bedding, and it's just, it's made out of exactly the same thing as that expensive bagged bedding that you would get at the, at the feed store for like $6 a bag or whatever. You can make your own. As long as you're getting the right kind of cartons. I always try to avoid plastic when I can, and I go for something that will break down. Once the rabbits have used these, it goes into the hotbed and into the garden system, so nothing gets wasted. It's a very happy system to me, and there's just so many different ways to do this. So I'll try and keep you up to date on what we're doing to save costs on having our rabbits, and um, I'm excited to take you along for the journey. So we'll talk to you later. You got it? All right, so... Funny bunny. What? I'm just trying to keep warm. Here, go ahead and back up. I'm just it out. Ow. What's he doing? Pretty good. Got some happy dirt underneath it. Mm -hmm. Happy, happy dirt. Yep. Got some black. Far dark brown. I think he can go a while without it. He d it doesn't look very... I think he can go a while without it being cleaned out. It looks pretty clean to me. So you don't have to change the bedding in every part of the cage, just in the part where you figure out that he goes potty. And what we use 
Izzel's egg cartons and uh, cut up paper. Ripped up, I think you mean. Yep. We rip it. And a lot of that paper is what I rip up. And we also give them some hay to chew on. It's a hard, it can be pretty hard to get this thing. So having fun, Paige? Yeah. Having fun, Mom? Yeah. Having fun, fun um, <laughs> honey bun? So I am putting on another layer of rabbit manure. They'd been eating a lot of hay, so that's why you see a lot of vegetation in here. So I've been putting in logs and wood mulch, not sawdust, of uh, mulch, bark, chips, and then I'm layering rabbit manure and then a little bit of really cold uh, ashes from the fire. And I'm bringing it all in with the wheelbarrow. Here's my hotbed, it's really heating up. It's getting way too hot in here for the bunnies, but Mama Daisy is nesting, and so I'm afraid. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm afraid to move her. You don't really want to upset a mama, a mama anything just before she's about to have babies. It's not good for her. <laughs> you have a mustache, Mama. This one, I put the coconut core that had the chemical fertilizer in it on top of the rabbit manure. This one, I mixed the rabbit manure in. milk jug to put over it to give it just a little bit of extra help because the steam rises up through the straw but the steam doesn't rise up through the bottoms of the boxes if that makes sense it can't get up through the bottoms of the boxes so as I continue to charge this I will always use rabbit manure tea it just even though I have the manure here on top that kind of filters down a little bit it does need to have the um, the actual fertilized water going into it in order to keep things warming up you can see how much mold we've got coming in here. Can you see that? How good things are getting started? Fungus and mold and things are just breaking down really good over here. And on this side, there's none of that. Nothing's breaking down. There's no warmth. It's not warm to the touch. Over here, it's warm to the touch. It's starting to break down and turn into soil. The problem here is that this side is gonna start sinking before that side does. So we might get a little bit unbalanced eventually. Here are the peas coming up. It's still February. It is February. I covered up some of the others. When I came in through here and watered, it washed some of the soil off the peas, and so I put some more soil down. So that's why you're not seeing them as many as you would have if I hadn't covered them back up a little bit. See these? I just, it was an accident. So, and then through here we have, um, cabbages and bok choy and uh, Swiss chard. I do want to come out here and put some kohlrabi, etc. And the problem is, is I want things to stay a little bit warmer in here. And so I do want to leave this space open to keep charging things for a bit. Just for a bit. Just till it warms up just a little bit more. Cause this here, this is a borage. They're, they're frost sensitive. And then this one is elecampane, more sorrel, and that over there is gobu burdock, and then onions. So these guys aren't totally frost sensitive, or yeah, they're not totally frost insensitive. Um, not as sensitive as a, as say, a basil would be, but it's, I'm super, can you tell in my voice how excited I am about this? So once I have these beds full, and it's later in the year, and I have them really well started and they're staying warm. Then I'm gonna come over here and start charging this one, but for now I'm just gonna let it sit. I'm gonna let it sit because I want it to be my backup heater for the greenhouse. 
And if I start it up right now, it can't be a backup heater. It will be a heater at the same time. And then I won't have more space to bring another one in.